We are going to make a modded Minecraft server in this video. We're going to go every single step of setting up your very own modded server using Forge in Minecraft 1.18. Dot two. We're going to go over every single step from downloading the Forge server files to getting those files set up on your computer to then allowing your friends to join your modded Minecraft server. It is all going to be covered in this video. First and foremost though, I do want to mention that this isn't a 24 hour server. It's only up and running when your computer is up and running. On top of that, it's also going to require your computer to have decent resources because modded servers are very resource intensive. That's going to be a very modern CPU and at least 16 gigabytes, if not more, RAM. Last but not least, it's also not meant to be public. It's only meant for your friends, your family, people you trust because it's using your own IP address. Anyone who gets the IP address of the server you can do things like DDoS you, take your internet offline using that DDoS, and even find out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates. But what if you want the simplest way possible to start a Minecraft server, where you don't have to worry about hardware, you don't have to worry about security and people DDoSing you or doing anything like that, and it's just super simple to set up and can be up all the time? Well, Guess what? That's where Apex Minecraft hosting comes in. Go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own Forge Minecraft server in just a few clicks. Literally in under five minutes, you will have your Minecraft server set up and have mods installed. Not to mention that if you're looking to start a mod pack server, Apex allows you to do that in one click by just selecting the mod pack you want to play. RL Craft. Sky Factory, anything you want to play, you can do it at Apex. They support over 200 mod packs with one click installation. However, if you do just want to start a Forge server, they make that super easy as well. And you can start your Forge server with just one click and easily add mods to the server. Not to mention, if you do have issues, Apex has 24 hours, seven day a week support that you can reach out to. And it's hosted on their hardware, meaning you don't have to worry about how good your computer hardware is. As long as you can play Minecraft, you can play on your server at Apex Minecraft hosting. Additionally, the server can be public or private, whichever one you want. And last but not least, it is lag free and extremely secure. So you can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to get your server up and running. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and get our Forge server up and running. The first thing we want to do is go to the second link in the description down below. And that's going to take you here. This is our guide to getting Forge in single player, but guess what? The same files are used. So once you're here to scroll down and click on the green download Forge button. Once you've done that, it will take you to Forge's official download page where you want to make sure Minecraft 1.18.2 is selected. If it's not, just come over here to the left-hand side, click 1.18 and select it. Once it is selected, come under Download Latest and click on the Installer button. That'll then take you off to Add Focus here where, stop, don't click anything on this page whatsoever. You don't want to click a single thing on this page. All you want to do is wait about five seconds. And after about five seconds, a red skip button will appear up here in the top right. When you click on that red skip button in the bottom left, Forge is going to download on Google Chrome where you may need to keep it. If you're on Mozilla Firefox, it's going to download in the center of your screen where you'll need to save it. As long as Forge is in the title, you're 100% safe to do that. We can now minimize our browser and before we get any of the Forge files to our desktop, which we need to do, but let's go ahead and first right click on our desktop, create a new folder and title this whatever we want. I'm going to title it play.breakdowncraft.com, but you can really name it anything. Forge server, for example, because this is where your Forge server files are going to live. Why did I name this play.breakdowncraft.com? Well, that's because that's our own Minecraft server, specifically a Minecraft 1.18.2 survival and skyblock server that is absolutely incredible and hosted on Apex. So we really do trust that we host our own server there. But once you've got your folder created here on the desktop where you want your Forge server to be stored, let's go ahead and get that Forge file we downloaded. To find that, click the little Windows icon. It's in the top left of my screen, bottom of your screen, or center of your screen on Windows 11, then type in Downloads. You have this Downloads file folder here. Open this up, and in here you'll find Forge. Drag and drop this to your desktop for ease of use. Now, if the icon isn't the same as mine, that's okay. Let's see if we can open up Forge at all. To do that, go ahead and right click on it, click on open with, click Java and click OK. But Nick, I didn't have Java there. Well, if you didn't have Java or if your icons aren't working and they aren't the same as mine here, here's how you can fix that. Java 17. Java 17 is required for mods. It's required for servers. So it's definitely required for modded Minecraft servers. And you can find this link in the description down below, along with all the other resources and links that I do mention in this video in the description. But nevertheless, once you're here, scroll down and go through this simple tutorial to get Java 17. Now, for most of you, that will allow you to open up that Forge file. But for some of you, it still won't, or your icons will still be broken. In that case, what you want to do is run the jar fix. And the jar fix is basically going to take all the jar files on your computer and link them back 
to Java, making them work properly together. Nevertheless, we can finally go ahead and minimize our browser, and then we want to right click on Forge, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. That's going to open up the mod system install for Forge. Now, one thing that's worth noting, to join a Forge server, you have to have Forge installed locally in your Minecraft launcher as well. You and all your friends are going to have to do that, so make sure you send them our Forge tutorial that was at the beginning of this video, linked in the description, and that will show them how to install Forge themselves so they can join your server. Now let's go ahead and click on Install Client first, click OK, and then it's going to download and do everything that it normally does to install Forge locally on your computer. At this point, it's doing nothing for your server except allowing you to join it when that time comes. But once it's done, we can go ahead and click OK. Right here, successfully installed, click OK. We then need to open up Forge again. So right click on it, click on Open With, click Java again, and click OK. It's now going to open up the mod system install for Forge, where this time you want to click on Install Server. Then you want to see this red box that appears here. Click on these three dots on the right hand side. It's going to open up this kind of rudimentary file browser where you want to click on Desktop, and then you want to click on Play.BreakdownCraft.com or Forge Server or whatever that folder you created on your desktop was named. Click open and then boom, that red box should disappear because that folder should be empty. And that is just to confirm more time on our desktop and where we want that folder to go or all of our Forge files to go. And that's going to be in my case, but our breakdowncraft.com. In your case, it could be Forge server. Finally, click OK. And now it's going to download and install everything it needs to get the Forge server up and running, right? So it's downloading all those files, getting them set up, getting everything running. And this could take a second. So I'll see you once it's complete. Once it is complete, you'll see this successfully downloaded Minecraft server and installed 1.18.24. Forge. Click OK, closes out of the Forge installer, and you can actually delete this now from your desktop. All you need on your desktop is your Forge server folder that you created. Open this up, and in here you'll find basically a few different files. Files that you'll use to start your server. First things first though, to do that, just double click on this run.bat file here. When you do so, it's going to open up this, it's going to start trying to run things, and it is going to download a few things, but it will fail. As you can see, there we go, it has now failed. You need to agree to the ULA to continue, press any key to continue. So let's do that, press any key, and we have this ULA.txt file. Open that up, and here in Notepad, by the way, you can open this file up in Notepad. So open it up, then go to this link, and if you agree to the Minecraft ULA, come under EULA equals false, and change it to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, right like so. Click File, Save, and it will save the EULA.txt file, and then you can close out of the file. Now we can double click the run.bat file again, and this time your Minecraft server is going to start. And by the way, that's how you start your Minecraft server every time. Just double click on that run.bat file, or it just might be called run for you. If it is just called run and you want to change that, by the way, you can come over here to view in your file like window here, click on view, and then make sure file name extensions is checked. When you click that, that .bat will appear. Nevertheless, our server is now started. Now it's not completely finished running yet. As you can see, it's now opening up a GUI manager that's a lot prettier than this console manager over here. But overall, the server is starting, and as you can see, preparing spawn. Soon, it will say done here in the console. There we go. It says done, and you at this point can join your server. And I think it's important that you do that just to see that your server is working. Now, at this point, your friends can't join. We're going to need to port forward to do that. And don't worry. We're going to walk you through all of it in this video, but let's see if we can join this server. So we want to open up the Minecraft launcher, and as I said earlier, we installed Forge in the Minecraft launcher locally because you need to run Forge locally to join the server. You cannot join a Forge server with vanilla Minecraft. So as you can see here, we have Forge. I am going to quickly go in here and change our resolution. That way we can see better once we get in game. But overall, there is our Forge profile. You can click here to select it. If you don't have it here or don't have it in your installations after making sure modded is checked, go check out our dedicated Forge tutorial and it will show you how to fix that. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and click play. Click play again to launch mod in Minecraft and I will see you after a quick jump cut in game. So here we are. Our server is launched here as you can see on the left and Forge is open on the right in Minecraft. So now what we want to do is click on multiplayer, direct connection, and then the IP address that you're going to join your server with is actually really simple. It's just called local host. Now again, you're the only person that can join your Minecraft server this way, and you need Minecraft to be on the same computer that you're running the server on to be able to join it like this, but it's a great way to test. So let's go ahead and click join server. When we do that with local host, as you can see on the left-hand side, we joined right on in, and boom, here we are in a modded Minecraft Forge server, and 1.18.2. If we hit F3, we'll actually be able to see up here in the top left, I believe, that this is in fact Forge 1.18.2 right here and Forge Server right here, proving that we're both in Forge 1.18.2 and on a Forge Server. We'll do that a little later too, once we join via our public IP address, which is required in order to join a server with 
like externally, like your friends will need to join a server using your public IP. Sorry, I got startled there for a second. It's just not often you join into a Inferno. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, close out of this. Close out of Minecraft as well and stop this server. How do you stop your server? Well, come over here in either of these consoles. It can be in this one right here or down here. It doesn't matter, but type stop, right? Like so with no slashing, then just type stop, hit enter, and then your server will properly stop. So as you can see, boom, it closes out. If you don't do that, it can corrupt worlds. It can do all sorts of stuff. So always stop your server that way. Nevertheless though, we have now proven that you can join your server, but your friends can't. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go ahead and close out of our server files here. And then we want to go up here to the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, center of your screen on Windows 11 and type in CMD. You have this command prompt here. And then we want to go ahead and click it to open up command prompt. So type in CMD and then it opens up command prompt right like so. Then we want to type in here IPCONFIG. IP config exactly like that. I P C O N F I G all one word and hit enter. Is it going to bring up a bunch of information here? What we then want to do is write down some of this information. Now we can do this either in notepad, which is what I'm going to do, or we can do it on a physical notepad on our desk. It doesn't matter. You just need these numbers for later. So we need our IPv4 address. So IPv4 and we need our default gateway. So let's go ahead and grab the IPv4 address here. Now, my IPv4 address is probably going to be different from yours, and your default gateway is probably going to be different from mine. And that's supposed to be that way. That's why we're getting the numbers this way. So for our IPv4 address here, right here it is. It is 192.168.1.67. So dot one dot six seven. So that's the, our IPv4 address there. For our default gateway, it's down here, and it is 192.168.1.1. Now, the thing is, if you have two numbers next to default gateway, if you have one that's on top, that's numbers and letters, and then one that's under that, that's just numbers, you want the one that's just numbers. It should be in a similar format to mine here. Nevertheless, we can now close out of the command prompt and we can open up our browser. Where earlier I opened up this blank tab. That's because in this tab up here at the top, you would normally type the breakdown.xyz, breakdowncraft.com, youtube.com, where you would normally do a don't like type in a domain or run a search. You want to type in your default gateway. So for me, that's 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. Now for me, it opens up a login box from the top of the screen. For you, it may be in the center of the screen. It may pop in from the bottom. It may be in a nice looking GUI on your computer. It looks might look really good. But no matter what, there'll be some sort of login box that appears. What do you put in this login box? Well, this is going to be your router's username and password, which we luckily in the description down below have an in-depth guide on how to find your router's username and password. As you can see, it goes through a bunch of different methods here up to method five. Usually people find it by method three, setting and basically going in and using their default username and password. Sadly, most people never change this and that would be why that works. So I'm gonna go ahead to a quick jump cut logging into mine and then we can port forward to allow your friends to play on your Minecraft server. So here we are logged into my router. Now I have a Orbi Netgear router and if you have a Netgear router, awesome. But if you don't, that's okay because you guessed it in the description, we have a new entire guide on how to port forward your router. And specifically this up here is a complete guide on port forwarding your router. And it goes through a bunch of different routers. Now, even if your specific router isn't mentioned in that video, you could still watch it and you should still watch it because a lot of routers have very similar terminology. And what you're looking for is what it could be in your router. So when you go clicking around, you're going to know what some of this terminology is called because you've seen it in this video on port forwarding. So it is worth a watch no matter what, but for my router, it is in advanced. For you, it may be in advanced, advanced. It may be in port forwarding, maybe in apps and gaming. It may be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in security. It could be in... NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding, or NAT gaming, NAT gaming. I've seen it be in a ton of stuff. For me, it is in advanced, then it is in advanced again, and then finally, it is in port forwarding slash port triggering. Once you're here, though, we want to go ahead and add a new port forward. Now, for me, that entitles clicking add custom service. For you, you may actually have just a big list of empty boxes on your port forwarding page. That's okay. Just start with the first one and enter in this information. But for me, I need to add a custom service. Now, once we've done that, it opens up this sort of next menu here where we can enter in all this information. So for service name or ID, this is going to be Minecraft because this is for Minecraft. For protocol, it's going to be TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP. TCP or both. No matter what, you want to make sure both of these are selected. For your external port, internal port, or for anything mentioning the word port, P-O-R-T, anything mentioning the word port, you want to enter in 25565. So for external port, 25565. Internal port, 
25565. You want to make sure that no matter what, if it says the word port, it's 25565. And by the way, if you can't choose both TCP and UDP, do this twice, once for TCP, once for UDP. I mean, forgot to mention that, right? But if both is an option or TCP slash UDP is an option, you're good to go. Nevertheless, though, we then want to enter in our internal or local IP address. This is going to be that IP address we found earlier, our IPv4. So 192.168.1.67. You may also have to select the device you're starting the server on instead of entering an IP. That's perfectly normal as well. And I do have that option over here. But for me, it's just easier to enter in the number. At this point, most of you can click apply, you can click OK, but some of you will need a public or external IP address. Not many of you, but guess what? All of you, every single person watching this video needs their public external IP address. Even if they don't need it for their port forward, they need it to join the server or their friends do because that's how your friends are going to join the server. It's the IP they're going to use. So nevertheless, in the description down below, we have a link to our website where we actually give back to you your IP address. Now, in my case here, as you can see, you can only see 103 because this is a public IP. You don't want to give this out to everybody on the internet. So we want to make sure that it's only people we trust. And I don't trust everyone on the internet who could be watching this video. I'm sorry, everyone. Love you, but don't trust you. And uh, so with that, you can only see 103 here, but you can also see some of the other information that you can get from public IP. This is also blacked out here. You can't see it, but that's okay because it shows you why this is only meant for your friends, family, people you trust. And should you decide, eh, maybe this is a little too risky for me, you can use Apex right here by just clicking that link. Nonetheless, once you've got your public IP, if you need it for your port forward, come back and enter it. Otherwise, we can minimize our browser and we can even close out of this information. We don't need it anymore. What we do need to do is start our server. So double click on this. And actually, I forgot something here. My bad. Sometimes that happens, but not really. What we need to do though is we do still need those numbers earlier, specifically our IPv4, because we need to open our server.properties. You can just open this in Notepad if it asks you, or text edit or something like that. Then once you're here, just scroll down to server IP equals, and then you want to enter in your IPv4 address. Now I remember what that was for me 192.168.1.67, and hopefully you didn't close out of that immediately as soon as I said to, and you still have that number. Otherwise, you can go back and get it again via IP config. Then we want to save that in server.properties, and now we're good to double click on this run.bat file. That's then going to start up our Minecraft server, right like so. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick jump cut to where we're in Minecraft with Forge open and this right here open as well, which is our server. So here we are, our server is up and running on the left and Minecraft's up and running on the right. Again, with Forge, you need to have Minecraft open with Forge to join the server. Click on multiplayer here and then we can direct connect again. This time though, we're not gonna use our local host, we're gonna use our public IP address. Now, one thing I wanna mention before I hit join server here is some ISPs don't allow you to join via your public IP. That is because technically what you're doing is routing back to yourself via your public IP. Now mine's awesome enough to do that and as you can see, 103 is the same here. Mine allows me, by the way, to connect back. They're awesome enough to allow me to do that. Yours might not. So if you can't join off your public IP like I'm doing right now, then the reason for that is because your ISP just won't let you. So make sure your friends can join off your public IP. And if they can, you're good because you can join off of that local host that we saw earlier. However, if your friends also can't join off of your public IP address, then what you need to do in that case is look at Windows Defender or a firewall on your router. In the description down below, you'll find our guide on Windows Defender and how to fix that for Minecraft servers. It's the same for vanilla and modded servers, so no worries there. But as you can see, we have joined via our public IP to our Minecraft Forge server. Look at this. Our Forge server, our modded server is now set up. We know it's the same world because, uh, well, these trees were on fire before we left and uh, seems like they're finally about to put themselves out. Nevertheless, thanks for watching. You now know how to make a modded server. If you have any issues, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you want to add mods to your server, check out the video on your screen right now. It goes over every single step of downloading and installing Minecraft mods, adding them to your server, as well as the things that your players need to do, your friends, whoever's playing on this server, need to do in order to join your server as well. So it covers everything in depth. So nevertheless, go into that video see how to add mods to your Minecraft server once you've got this set up. Step one's done. The hard part's over with. Now we just need to add mods and that video shows you how to do that on your screen now. Nevertheless, thanks for watching. My name is Nick. See you in the next one. Peace.